Witchy poo. I saw my reference. I am starting to construct a hat. I'm using foam core and a bucket, but I'm gonna sculpt it, but I need an understructure, so I'm gonna work on that later. That's the least of my worries, because I am sculpting this thing still. And uh, the trick about this thing is, when you look at Witchy Poo in photos, you never see her ear. So this, any detail in this sculpture is gonna be just in the face. All this ear, all this back of the head stuff, it's not gonna have any texture or detail because you're never gonna see it. Really, everything from here forward will have all the detail and texture. And I was gonna hair this mask, but then I realized I was having trouble finding the right color hair for this character. So I found a wig, which is, that is the perfect witchy poo color. I mean, it's pretty damn close. And I may just leave it like that or I may cut it off and hair it by hand because I, maybe I could get two, two bunches of hair out of that and not just use one wig for the whole mask. I don't know. But I'm starting to detail this thing and as you can tell, it's gonna take a long time. I use a variety of tools for texture. Um, I have texture pads. I have this roller. Oranges, sponges, who said? Oranges, sponges, who said? Oranges, sponges, who said? There ain't no rhyme for oranges. Oranges, sponges, there's another one. Oranges, sponges, there's another one. Oranges, sponges, there's another one. Another rhyme for oranges. So here's what's happening with the hat. Um, I have a couple of layers in there, but I want the brim. This, this outer layer here is the brim of the hat. And the hat brim on the witchy poo character, it's more of a curvy, it's not a flat witch's hat uh, on the brim. So what I'm doing here is at this stage, this is very flexible wire I got at Michael's. I'm using some Gorilla Tape and I taped it down, and now I'm gonna paint about four to five layers over that. So I'm basically embedding bendable wire in the brim. Instead of sculpting the hat with a curvy brim, after the hat is out of the mold and painted, I'll be able to, hopefully if this works, um, bend the brim to the desired shape I want. I think that is a much Hopefully, if it works, it's a better idea than having to sculpt it in it, with, with those curves because it would be very, number one, it would be hard to sculpt like that, and secondly, getting latex into a thin, you know, brim, which is maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch would be ridiculous. I think this hopefully will work. It's mold day for the witchy poo mask. So here's a close-up video, all a lot of detail into this sculpture. So there she is. The hat was already made, it's out of the mold and it's cleaned off, so that's in the other part of the basement. And I got all my stuff out here, all my stuff ready to sprayer in a little while, get my crystal clear out, my dulling spray, I got my uh, ultra cal, I got my clay, my water, my chip brushes, my rubber gloves. Here is the finished witchy poo hat, completely painted. I just put the feather in it, so all latex. And what I did is I embedded wire into the brim so I can change the, you know, I can make the brim, I can mold, you know, change the shape of it, I can curl it up. There's wire inside the brim. I did that uh, in between layers in the mold. It's like flexible wire, you can get it like uh, Michael's. Instead of sculpting the brim in a curvy way, which would have been difficult to fill with latex in the mold, I figured it'd be easier to put wire inside it.
Anyway, the mold that I made today, there's latex in there now, so the mask is being cast as we speak. Stay tuned! Okay, so here we are, very early in the morning in the basement workshop. And what I've done here is getting hair ready for the witchy poo mask. The mask is in the mold right there, draining. I got some more latex in there. And I bought a wig because this particular hair color is, uh, was hard to find. So I bought a wig on Amazon, had the right color, but I, I, the, just sticking a wig on the mask wasn't what I wanted to do. I want to be very specific. She has a very specific hair uh, uh, on her head. So what I did is I cut carefully. <laughs> I cut big pieces. I used 95% of the hair. I cut it off and I painted, I've done this before, I painted a strip of latex on the table and let that set a little bit. Then I took hair from the, that I cut, uh, into synthetic hair, and I laid it down and then I painted another layer of latex on top. So these are going to be placed on the mask when it's finished and painted, because this character has a hat. So you're not gonna see the tops, the hat will be covering it. But I, I, instead of just putting a wig on the mask, I felt this was gonna be better. And I did this on my mask last September when I did the Sinister Spinster. I made these big, basically patches of hair, latex at the top, and the hair is embedded in the latex. So I can, when this, now I'm gonna paint like three more layers of latex so it's very strong, because I want all this hair to stay intact. And then when these dry later today, I'll powder the tops and the bottoms when I take them off. And I'll have these one, two, three, I have five of these. I have um, five patches, which then I can stick on, you know, I can glue them onto the mask. We're in the garage. I have all the hair pieces I made for Witchy Poo on the floor because I'm going to spray them with Cryolan Crystal Clear just to make the hair a little stiffer so I can shape it uh, better when I put these on the mask. So I started painting witchy poo a little while ago and got the flesh down. I just uh, started painting the eye makeup, teeth. Um, still have to do her lips and other kinds of details, but she's coming along. A little bit further along, doing the uh, makeup, painting the makeup. I still uh, have to put the black outline around the lips. The lips are wet right now, so I'm going to hold off. But this is the really, the eye makeup, that's what makes it witchy poo. So, you know, she will look like that eventually. But right now, it's a work in progress. Well, witchy poo's got her eyeballs in. She's all painted and glossed. And, uh, of course, she looks a little weird because she's got no eyebrows and no hair, and no hat. But, I think she looks pretty damn good. These are plastic eyeballs. They were like 12 bucks at uh, Complete Sculptor. They're pretty, for 12 bucks, they look pretty damn good. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is, I have all the hair pieces uh, sitting here, and the hat, I just tried the hat on, the mask, it looks great. And I've marked, I put the hat on, and I marked some black dots where the hair Needs to, this is this line right here, this black line on both sides of the head, shows where the brim of the hat stops. So the hair I have here, this hair needs to, I don't want to see this latex, it's going to need to sit above those lines. So right now I'm going to do take some scotch tape and just lay the hair pieces on temporarily to see how it looks with the hat. So that's what I'm up to. Well, starting to put hair on her. I know it looks ridiculous like she's bald. It's because she's going to have a hat permanently attached. So just don't look at her like that. And also her eyebrows aren't on, so it looks a little weird. But she's looking pretty good so far. All right, well, there's Witchy Poo. Her hair is completely on. Her hat is right there. Still haven't done the eyebrows yet. Going to do those uh, soon. I just epoxied her eyes. I decided... Um, even though those are plastic eyes that you could take out, I figured I'm just gonna leave them in. And so I epoxied them. So I gave them a little bit of epo epoxy and it's holding them in. So I'm letting that set. Then I will do the eyebrows. After the eyebrows are done and dried, 
And the eyebrows are not going to be done with these pieces I made. They're going to be done by hand with uh, Mod Podge, how I usually uh, do hair, because the eyebrows are very thick. Here's a picture of Witchy Poo. As you can see, her eyebrows are like really ridiculously thick. So I'm going to do those by hand. And when that dries, maybe later tonight, I'll attach the hat. The way the hat is going to go on, there's a hole in the top of the mask. And the hat has a string, which the string, it's a piece of twine. It's going up through the hat. It's attached to the tip inside. So when I attach the hat to the mask, the string, the end of this string is going to go through the hole in the head. And so I can pull the hat. I will attach the hat with epoxy. So it's attached here, but also I'm going to pull the, the twine through that hole and glue it down inside the top of the mask so it's kind of snug. So to give it a little bit of extra strength holding the hat in place because I can't attach the hat, you know, where the hair is because it's hair. I can't glue, you know, the hair. That's ridiculous. So I'm going to attach the hat through the hole so it'll be tight and then across the forehead, right under the brim with more epoxy. So that should hold it. That's the only way I can do it. So it works on the child catcher mask, so it'll work on this. At least I hope so. Now I know what you must be thinking. Is Witchy Poo Amish? No. The reason she has paper towels on her head is because I did the eyebrows and the eyebrow hair is glued on and it's drying. And some of this eyebrow hair was kind of starting to fall forward and while it's drying. So I couldn't put like, you know, what am I gonna do? Hold my hand over it? So laying a little bit of paper towel is kind of holding that hair in place while it dries. So it looks, she looks almost like a, I don't know what you call that, like a religious, I don't know who wears a hat like that. Anyway, whatever. Um, she's pretty much done. So here we are the next morning. So what's happening here? Why is witchy poo upside down? Well, I'll tell you. I just, glued the hat to the mask. Um, so what I did is, remember that string I told you about? Well, I put the hat, it was on the stand over here, and I placed the hat, the string through the hole, then I put the hat on, and then I picked the hat up and the mask, holding them together so they wouldn't separate, and I placed it upside down in between these two chairs, because what I need to, first thing I did is, the string is coming through that hole down there. Now I put a piece of really good heavy black tape to hold it in place. But you can see, let me zoom in, the string is popping out. You can't really see it's very dark in there. Uh, and then what I did is I mixed up a bunch of um, Gorilla Glue two-part epoxy. And with a paintbrush, I put a big bunch of glue over the end of that tape. Right under that black tape is the hole. The hole was a little too big. I didn't want the epoxy to leak through the hole. I wanted it to drain into the mask, into the hat, because then I needed it to be on the string. So it's that the, the edge of that, that piece of twine is covered in wet epoxy and it's drying right now. And keeping it upside down is gonna keep the hat resting in the hole of the hat. If I did it upside down, then the epoxy will be running down her face because I also, in the space between the hat and the forehead, it's a very tight space. I, this, this entire area here, inside there, you can't see because it's dark, I painted in epoxy. So that is gonna keep the hat, when it sets, the hat and the mask together. So she's done, and so now we're gonna take some really good photos with the really good camera. Uh, in a little while. Who would think to see this face that I'm the loneliest witch in town? <laughs> Who would think such charm and grace could be the loneliest witch in town? I can't figure out what's the matter with men. My phone hasn't rung since 1910. It's not even a wrong number every now and then. <laughs> I'm the loneliest witch in town.